Before we jump in and have a look at the road safety audit for Bridge Road, I just want to go through the Austroads guide to conducting road safety audits because if you've never read a road safety audit before, uh, you might be wondering what the heck it's all about. So let's have a look at some of the concepts that are contained in the guide and then we'll look at how they relate to the actual report itself. Just a small point I'll raise at the start, and that is that this uh, guide was originally issued in 2009, and that's what's been listed in the road safety audit up front, but it's been amended a couple of times since, and the latest version actually was released in 2019. One big change in all the Austroads guides between 2009 and today uh, is the introduction of the concept of the safe systems approach. And if we go to the guide to traffic management part one, this really um, explains the safe systems approach quite nicely. Uh, what they've brought in is the concept of safe mobility, which is the concept of mobility within the limits of safe operation, which reverses the traditional approach of providing a level of safety once all mobility ob objectives have been met. So when you're looking at a road in the old days, what you used to try and do was work out how to jam lots and lots of cars through it and then work out how to make it safe. Now you take a road and you work out how to make it safe, and then you wonder about how many cars you can put through it. So it's a completely different approach to uh, road safety. And it goes on to say, while the needs of a particular road user group may conflict with the needs of another, uh, the mobility function should at all times be a secondary consideration behind the needs to provide a safe operating environment for all road users. And I think that's important when you're reading the audit. I think this page from the guide uh, makes some useful points and you might just want to pause here and read through them because they're quite useful. And this is just a quick reminder that the audit is carried out by people who are uh, completely independent. And that's typical of any audit, whether it's commissioned by the Council or uh, Transport for New South Wales, etc. And if you're interested in what's not in a road safety audit, uh, it's probably worth pausing here and just having a look at this stuff as well. Audits can be carried out at any stage in a project, ranging from the feasibility stage to uh, when the road is actually open. And uh, in this case, it's, it hasn't been done until the road's actually open. Now, it would have been nice if uh, one had been done during, say, the detailed design or the pre-opening stage, but hey, that's water under the bridge. We've got the audit now. Uh, it might be a lesson for future cycleways. It'd be a good idea to uh, do audits at the detailed design stage. If this audit had been commissioned by the council or the RMS, then the auditors could have been provided with all the detailed engineering drawings. Uh, you can see here, these drawings were taken from a West Connect safety audit, and you can see they're pretty detailed. We don't have that kind of stuff to work with, uh, I mean, that's just the way it is. Would we have possibly seen fewer issues if the audit had been done uh, before the road opened and they got it right first time? Yeah, look, that's entirely possible. But then on the other hand, uh, they might only just be starting construction of the cycleway now. So uh, what do you want? Do you want something that's good or, you know, something good now or something that's perfect next year? I'll go with good now. And we can see here in the last paragraph that the guide says specifically, it's not appropriate to give auditors a power of veto over a particular design. Now, if you're going to audit the safety of a cycleway, what does the guide say about who should be included in the audit? Well, here's a couple of pages that strongly suggest there should have been local cyclists included into the team. Now, these don't have to be specialist safety auditors or people that have got training. These are just people that have got local knowledge of traffic conditions and are uh, confident uh, cyclists who know what they're doing, who can provide advice to the auditors. Uh, and how should uh, you conduct the audit? Well, you should um, cycle on a cycleway. It's also spelled out here in the guide. I don't think this was in the earlier version of the guide put out in 2009, but it's certainly in the 2019 issue. Now this part's probably the most important bit, and that's understanding how the uh, level of risk is calculated. So what you have is what's the probability of an event occurring and what's going to be the outcome. Now, as far as cyclists are concerned, pretty much every outcome is going to be serious. And that's how it's defined um, in, the, uh, in the guide. You really can't have a cyclist crash that's not serious. Um, you, you, some of them might be minor, but uh, you know, for the purposes of this, they've defined them as serious. So therefore, the frequency of a crash is going to define um, what the level of risk is. Uh, if it's a frequent serious crash, it's going to be intolerable. Uh, it has to, absolutely must be corrected. If it's probable and serious, it's also intolerable. Occasional and serious, high, and uh, improbable and serious gets a medium risk level. Now, this, this is rather different to the way motor vehicle crashes um, are calculated because 
you know, a lot of motor vehicle crashes might end up on the bottom line here of limited damage. Um, so, you know, you're going to have occasional and, and improbable uh, occurrences coming out as low risk, uh, something that's probable, medium risk, and a frequent, um, but, you know, just a small fender bender coming out as high risk. All these risk ratings are lower than what you end up with for cyclists. So when you read the report and you see um, 11 um, issues which are rated as a risk rating of intolerable and 12 as high, this is why. Um, it's, it's not because this cycleway is incredibly dangerous. It's the way risks are calculated when it comes to vulnerable road users. That's really important. You've got to keep that in mind. Well, this is an interesting idea. I think uh, that hasn't been covered. And that is uh, once an audit's been done, the, the project should be monitored for one to three years after it's been built to see if crash problems are uh, occurring and whether the problems were anticipated in the audit. So now, okay, great. We've now got the road safety audit for Bridge Road. We just have to come back in one to three years time and uh, see how the cycleway is performing. I think this is another key difference in the 2019 Austroads Guide for Road Safety Audits, and that is that if you're going to do an a, a audit for a particular road user group, then the auditors have to use the motor travel in question, i.e. ride the bike, and I don't think that was done for this particular audit. I think this page is useful for getting into the mindset of what the auditors are looking for uh, when they're going out and evaluating a site like this. So, you know, there's a whole bunch of questions they'll be asking there, and uh, they're all worthwhile asking too. Now, I just want to make one comment about the last paragraph, and that is about uh, drivers or cyclists taking in information and being able to process information and make decisions. Now, uh, when you're driving, you're obviously driving faster than uh, cycling in a car. The other thing is when you're in a car, your vision is restricted and your hearing is restricted. You've got A pillars and B pillars, you've got the roof line, you've got the bonnet, um, you're, you've got the windows up, you might have the radio on. You don't have all those restrictions in a bicycle. There's nothing in front of you, nothing to your side. And as long as you're not riding with, it, with earphones, you can hear everything that's going on as well. So it's much easier to take in information as a cyclist. You, you can just see and hear absolutely everything. You even smell everything. Um, and you're moving more slowly. So that gives you more time to go from one point to another. And that gives your brain more time to process that information that you're taking in. And that means um, you've got more time to make decisions, you've got more time to act. So this is why uh, you know, cyclists can often avoid a lot of crashes that you'd probably have in a car uh, for those very simple reasons. Now that has to be taken into account when you're looking at some of these hazards that have been identified. And you might look at it and go, yeah, as a driver, I would crash into that because of the speed I'm doing and my limited visibility. But on a bike, you'd go, well, I'd see that from a mile away. I'm going more slowly. I can just apply the brakes and avoid it. You know, that's, I think, one key reason why you have to cycle these things to give you that different viewpoint for driving it. And there's some useful points here on what makes a safe road environment. You can stop here and read them if you want to. Parked vehicles, well, they're more dangerous than you think, according to the Austroads guide here. And of course, to cyclists, yeah, they're a huge hazard, particularly around uh, the hazard of dooring, um, and also drivers pulling out of parking spots, etc., without looking or indicating and taking you out that way. So, um, one thing to note, though, is because the uh, bridge road is now a clearway, the audit didn't look at the hazards presented by parked vehicles because there's no longer any parked vehicles on that road. Uh, I think it would be a different story if a audit had been done at the design phase and there were parked vehicles to look at. Uh, it would probably list you know, hazards just all the way down the road from um, vehicle parking. Now this first paragraph about merging is quite important when you look at the, uh, the actually the first issue in the audit, which is to do with driving from the city uh, up towards Glebe and you go under the railway bridge and you have to merge at a left hand bend. And, and this is actually specifically called out in the audit guide. So um, just remember when you see that first issue, um, it, it's quite valid and it's called out here in particular. So if you've got absolutely nothing better to do on a wet weekend, well, you might want to go to the Austro's website, get yourself a log on and download, uh, you know, at least the Implementing Road Safety Audits Guide, you know, the 2019 version. And uh, you can read all 156 pages or whatever it is yourself and uh, get a better understanding of what's going on. But let's call it there and uh, part two, we'll look at the specifics of the audit itself.